Hey guys, this is Archana from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session on API testing. Before we proceed, let's go ahead and take a look at the topics which we will be talking about today. So we will begin the session by discussing what exactly is an API and what does it do. Then we will move on to our today's topic which is API testing. And there we will discuss what API testing is. Why do you have to test an API in the first place? How to perform API testing? different types of API testing that there are in the market and popular API testing tools. After that, we will discuss benefits and the challenges that you might come across when you're performing API testing. And lastly, we will end the session by doing a demo or basically by creating an API test in a popular tool called Catloon Studio. So I hope agenda was clear to you guys. Let's get started then. Guys, APIs have been around since 1960s. So if there aren't a new concept, why are this such a hot topic lately? Why do you think so? Because without APIs, the digital experiences that we expect every day as consumers wouldn't be possible. APIs are doing everything from driving information rich marketing campaigns to connecting mobile apps to streamlining internal operations. Well, here's a brief introduction to what APIs are and what they can do. To understand APIs better, let's consider a simple example. Imagine you're sitting at a table in restaurant with a menu of choices to order from. The kitchen here is part of the system that will prepare your order. What is missing here is that the critical link to communicate your order to the kitchen and deliver your food back to your table. That's where the waiter or an API comes in. The waiter is the messenger or an API that takes your request or order to the kitchen or the system and tells them what to do. Then the waiter delivers the response back to you. Well, in this case, it is the food. Well, put it in that way, it's easy to understand. API, just like a waiter, is a messenger between you and your application. Well, that being said, let's take a look at real world example of an API. Let's see how we are using APIs in our daily life. Let's say you are searching for a hotel room from an online travel booking site. Using the site's online form, you select the city you want to stay in, fill in the check in and check out dates number of guests, number of rooms and other information. Then you click the search button. So what's going on between you entering your information and the application displaying you the choices? APIs, that's what. So as you know, the traveling site aggregates information from many different hotels. So when you click search option, the site then interact with each hotel's API, which delivers the result for variable rooms that are available according to your choice. This can all happen within seconds because an API which acts like a messenger and runs back and forth between your application, database and devices. Now you understand what I meant when I was comparing API with a waiter. So it's basically a messenger. API is an acronym for application programming interface, which is a software intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other without any glitches. So every time you use an app like Facebook to send an instant message or to chat with your friend, whenever you check weather on your phone, you're using an API. So why use an API? What are the main reasons? First of all, it offers effortless integration. It allows customers to access data, server or any other application in very stable and secure way. Secondly, mobile phones and devices embedded with sensors fit perfectly with the service based structure of API. So as you know, cloud computing is already in rise. APIs are mainly needed for both the initial migration and integration with other systems in the cloud. And next, APIs offer flexibility. They allows you to quickly leverage and use your desired services on mobile and web. And the IT market is rising, so everyone wants their product to be best, which depends on how intuitive and usable their API is. And lastly, the huge success of APIs. If any company has employed or deployed API and has been successful using that, then other companies also want to do as well. So because of these reasons, API is very popular these days. As you know, software is exactly not perfect every time. So guys, now you know why is there so much hype about APIs. APIs are what gives value to your application. It's what makes our phones smart and it's what streamlines business processes. So if API doesn't work efficiently and effectively, it will never be adopted regardless if it is free or not. Also, if an API breaks because errors weren't detected, there's a threat of not only breaking a single application, but an entire chain of business processes hinged with it. So the solution to test APIs before they're put to use. Here are the most common reasons as to why you should test your APIs before putting them to use. 
First of all, you want to be sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. You want to make sure that the APIs are handling the maximum load or the amount of load that's been assigned to them. And you want to find all the way users can mess things up when they're using the applications that are linked with API. You also want to make sure your APIs work across different devices, browsers, and operating systems. And lastly, if you don't test your API, it can be costly for you later on. So these are the simple reasons as to why you should test your APIs before putting them to use. So basically, the entire process of testing these APIs is what you call API testing. It's a type of software testing that involves testing your application programming interface or APIs as a part of integration testing to see if they meet expectations for functionality, reliability, performance, and security. So as you can see, I'm stressing on four words here. So basically in API testing, you check if APIs meet expectations for functionality, reliability, performance, and security. Most basic level, API testing is intended to reveal bugs, inconsistency, or derivations, or deviations from the expected behavior of an API. And obviously the next question that follows after knowing what API testing is, where do you perform API testing? Since APIs lack a graphical user interface, API testing is usually performed at the message layer and can validate application logic very quickly and effectively there. Instead of putting it that way, let me make it more simple to you guys. Commonly applications have three separate layers or tires you can say. First comes is presentation layer or user interface. Then you have business layer application user interface or you can say for business logic processing and then you have database layer for modeling and manipulating your data. So application programming interface testing is performed at the most critical layer which is the business layer where business logic processing is carried out and all the transactions between user interface and the database happen. So basically in API testing our main focus will be on business logic layer of the software architecture. And I have to tell you guys API testing like graphical user interface testing won't concentrate on the look and feel of the applications. So it's entirely different from graphical user interface testing and API testing also requires less maintenance and effort when compared to GUI testing which makes it perfect choice for agile and DevOps teams. So making sure that API offers complete functionality allows for the easy future expansion of the application if you want to do so later on in the future. So that's what API testing is all about. So now that you know what API testing is and where you perform API testing, how do you actually go ahead and proceed or perform API testing? Well, it's a five step process. First step is documenting the API testing requirements. Like what is the purpose of API? What is the workflow of your application? What are the integrations supported by the API here or in your application? What are the features and functions of the API that you have included in your application? Documenting all these API testing requirements is the first thing you need to do. This will help you in planning API tests throughout the testing process. So the first step is just preparing a plan. Next step is setting up test environment according to your plan. So you'd set up testing environment with the required set of parameters around the API. This involves configuring the database and the server for the application's requirements. So once the setup is done, it's good to make an API call right away to make sure nothing is broken before we move forward with any kind of testing. So the next step is to combine your application data with your API test to ensure that API is functioning as it is expected to under different or basic conditions or you can say different input configurations. And then you need to organize yourself around the API test. For that you need to start asking questions like who is the target audience here? Who is your API customer? What aspects are you testing? What problems are we testing for? What are your priorities to test? What could potentially happen in such circumstances? Now after performing the test when you should consider a test as a pass or a fail? What other APIs could this API interact with and so on like that many different questions. So after you have created these testing boundaries and requirements you need to decide what you want to test on your API for. Well, we will look into what kind of API tests we can perform in the next part of the session. So I leave that step blank for a while, which is our fourth step designing on what to test API for. And finally, once you have decided the next step obviously is to create test cases around the requirements and execute them. A basic guideline is to identify the most common parameters and conditions that an end developer will use when calling the APIs. And based on that, you should create your test cases and execute the tests. 
And I'm sure the last step is the common step. You document your test results and give it for review. So let's just summarize what are the steps. The first step is preparing a documentation or a plan on what you're doing or you're trying to do. Then according to the plan, you set up your test environment. Then you combine your application data with your API test to make sure that your API is working perfectly under different input configurations. And then decide on what kind of API test you want to perform and lastly create the test cases based on your requirements and execute the test and create the test result report. So it's that easy. So one of the most important step while performing API test is to decide on what kind of test you want to perform. For that you should be aware of different types of API testing. As you can see there are multiple types of API testing. First you have functionality testing the basic testing. So you perform functional tests to check if the API works and does exactly what it is supposed to do. Functional testing includes testing of a particular functions in the code base. So that's what functional testing is. It's all in the name. Then you have reliability testing. Basically here you're checking if API can be consistently connected to whenever you want and lead to consistent results always. And then you have load testing. Well load testing you can say is a test which is obsessed with reality. Here you ask yourself you test your API on different scenarios like does this code of my API work in theory? Will this code work with 1k request, 10k request and 100k request? So basically you're trying to check if API can handle the load. Load testing is basically performed to ensure that the performance under both normal and at peak conditions is normal for an API. You have different scenarios under that. For example, you have baseline scenario. It tests the API against textbook values, regular traffic that the API expects in an ordinary usage. Then you have theoretical maximum traffic. That is to make sure during the full load periods, the solutions respond to the request properly. Then you have overload test to test the maximum capacity according to the theory. Maybe then add 10 to 20 percent more to the peak traffic. So this way you have different kind of load testing. And then you have end to end testing or UI and UX testing. It involves testing user interface for the API and other integral parts. Interface here naturally can be graphical user interface to GUI or it can rely on the command line endpoints as well. And then you have interoperability testing and compliance testing. This type of testing applies to SOAP APIs. It ensures that the predefined standards of your API is met. And then comes security testing. Security testing, penetration testing, and fuzz testing are the three separate elements of security auditing process. They are used to ensure that the API implementation is secure from external threats. That's the common point for all security, penetration, and the first testing. So, besides enclosing with penetration and first testing, security testing also includes additional steps like validation of encryption methodologies and of design of the access control for the API. And then comes penetration testing. It's considered the second step in the security auditing process. In this testing type, users with limited API knowledge will try to attack to access the threat vector from outside perspective. Well, it's all about functions, resources, processes, or sometimes it can be an entire API from the outside perspective. And then comes first testing is another step in the whole audit process. In this testing type, a vast amount of random data, which you usually refer to as noise or fuzz, will be input into the system with the aim that they want to forcefully crash the system and see what happens. This way when there's an actual threat from the outside they can react back to it very quickly. That's what first testing is all about. So basically first testing will help the API in terms of limit to prepare for the worst case scenarios. With that said these are the most frequently performed API tests. So by performing this test what are you trying to test for and what will you find? So basically by performing all this test, you're checking for duplicate or missing functionality or improper messaging, multi-threaded issues or performance issues or it could be about incompatible error handling or it could be about reliability issues. So basically by performing all this different kind of API tests, you are trying to find these kind of bugs. Since API testing is gaining popularity, we have many tools available for performing the same. Here are some of the top API testing tools that you can use for REST and SOAP web service testing. For example, you have Postman, you have Catloon Studio. Well, we'll be using one of these, which is Catloon Studio, to see how to create API tests. Then you have SOAP UI, then you have Tosca, Parasoft, Assertable. Well, these are very few. Basically, I just listed the most popular ones. Apart from these, there are many other tools outside. Well, you can choose any one of them according to your requirements and comfort. 
Now let's discuss benefits and challenges that you might face while performing API testing. So as we discussed API testing is an important activity that testing team should focus on. It offers a number of advantages over other kinds of testing. For example, first of all, it's language independent. Data here is exchanged via an XML or JSON format. So any language can be used for automation independent from the languages used to develop the application. XML and JSON are typically structured data. So the verification is literally very fast and stable. In these XML and JSON also have built in libraries to support comparing data in different data formats. So the first reason is it's language independent. Then it's graphical user interface independent or GUI independent. We can perform API testing within the application prior to GUI testing. And this early testing will help you get feedback sooner and so that you can improve the team's productivity. Core functionality can be tested to expose small errors and to evaluate team strength or your application build strength. Then it offers improved test coverage. Most API services have specifications allowing us to create automated tests with high coverage, including functional testing and non functional testing as well. And nowadays there are multiple techniques which are available using which you can find API test cases that could not be automated. So this way you can improve the test coverage by using either manual API testing or automated API testing. And another most important benefit of API testing is it reduces testing costs. API testing helps us to reduce the testing cost. With API testing we can find minor bugs like I said before graphical user testing. These minor bugs will become bigger during graphical user interface testing. So finding this bug in the early stage itself is a very good process and will be beneficial. And lastly, API testing is a step for faster release. It's common that executing a UI regression test takes about 8 to 10 hours, while the same scenario with API testing takes only 1 to 2 hours. You see the difference there, right? The flackiness of API testing is also lower than that of UI testing. All these allows to release are built faster with API testing. So these are certain benefits that you get out of performing API testing before putting your API to use. It's language independent. So basically you can use any language irrespective of the language the application is developed on. It's graphical user independent. You can find out the bugs in early stage because of that the testing costs are also released. I mean reduced and obviously it offers improved test coverage and faster release as well. Well, that's about the benefits. But again, like any other testing process, there are certain things that you will come across or you will feel difficult when you're performing just in API testing as well. The point of not having graphical user interface can be a benefit as well as a challenge. We discussed why it is a benefit. Now let's see why it's a challenge. APIs are primarily intended for computer to computer communication. Like I said, they're like a messenger between two applications. Computer doesn't need an a user interface. This is a challenge if you're a tester who is used to testing applications designed for end users with a graphical interface where you can click drag and in general manipulate an application or data visual. So basically if you are familiar with all those graphical user interface features it might be difficult to jump into API testing and then you have synchronous and synchronous dependencies. So often API's rely on other API's or other backend systems to function properly. So if any of these steps or systems are out of place all the assertions connected to it will fail. So this way when your API is connected to other APIs or any back instance like synchronous and asynchronous dependencies are there then it might pose a problem and during API testing it's difficult to test data management. So basically API testing verifies the business logic of an application layer which often has millions of permutation and use cases. So it can be difficult to propagate scenarios that sufficiently test your API boundaries. And then there is a problem of request and response as stated before API's work on a request and response relationship. SOAP and REST API's have different standards for the request and response calls that you will have to be familiar with before you actually start performing API testing and that task can be a difficult. SOAP based API use XML as a communication protocol. That means as a tester you must be able to read understand create and update XML documents with REST based services. The request can be much simpler. For the most part, it only involves sending an URL to the service. Thing here is you need to have certain technical knowledge before you actually jump into API testing. That's very necessary. And lastly, there's no documentation and there are a lot of time constraints in API testing. The APIs developed will hardly have any documentation. Without the proper documentation, it is difficult for the test designer to understand the purpose of these calls. 
parameter types, the possible valid and invalid values, the written values, the calls it makes to other functions and usage scenarios. To avoid that, like I said earlier, the first step of your API testing should be documentation. Thorough testing of API is almost time consuming. It requires a learning overhead and resources to develop tools and design tests that will suit your requirement. So these are certain challenges that you might come across while performing API testing. So guys, that's all with the theory part. I hope at this point of time you're aware of what API is and why do you need to test your APIs before you put them to use and how to perform API testing. Like I said, there are different tools which you can use to perform API tests. Like you have Postman, Catloon Studio, Parasoft, Assertable and many others. Now that we're aware of the theory part, let's go ahead and use a tool called Catloon Studio to see how to create API test cases and how to perform tests on API. So guys, in today's session or demo, we'll be using a tool called Catloon Studio. So basically, Catloon Studio is a robust and comprehensive automation tool for testing APIs, web, and mobile testing. I already have it downloaded and installed on my PC. All you have to do is search for Catalon Studio and you can just go for the first link that you find. So this Catalon Studio provides easy deployment by including all frameworks, ALM integrations and plugins in one package. It has a unique feature which is combining UI and API web services for multiple environments. And another thing is that it's a free tool and apart from that, Catalon Studio also offers paid support services for small teams, businesses and enterprises. As you can see, the most benefits of using Catalon Studio are listed here. Simple deployment, it's easy to use interface and like I said, it has a full feature package and it has an active community of about people from different 160 countries across YouTube channels, GitHub repositories, Udemy courses. So if you face any problems or if you have anything to contribute, you can go ahead and discuss your queries there. So the things that we might are interested today or we would be interested today about Catalon Studio is that it supports both SOAP and REST requests. SOAP and REST are two different kind of APIs. It also supports data driven approach and it supports CI CD integration. Apart from this, it has many other cool features that you can go ahead and research on. So I like I said earlier, I already have it installed. If you do not, you please go ahead and click on this download button. A zip file will be installed on your computer or downloaded on your computer. You can unzip it and install the application. Well, guys, I am using this tool for no particular reason. There are many other tools which might suit your requirement and you're free to go ahead and use any of these. So let's proceed with the demo part now. So guys, if you have installed Catalon Studio perfectly, then this is the home page where you will land on. So as you can see, this page is basically what is known as Catalon Help or you can see the documentation part here. You have tutorials on how to use different features of this application. Then you have different FAQs and different plugins that you can add. Like I said earlier, you can use Catalon to perform tests on web user interface, API, mobile testing and scripting as well. But as for today's demo, we are interested only with API. So you have getting started as in the tutorials here. You have the sample projects that you can go ahead and start with if you're not familiar with the tool. Then you have the folder which shows the recent project that you might have done. So as you can see, I've done a sample demo. So it's showing a sample demo here. But if you have missed the page, all you have to do is go for help here and you have Catalon help here. You can click on that and you'll land on this page again. So let me close the tab. So if you have gone for API, the page we'll land on is this page. You can see the test cases, object repository. You have test suite, data files, checkpoints, different keywords, and you have test listeners, reports, and other features or other plugins. We won't be using all these today for a few. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and create a project. You can see the plus a symbol or the new symbol here. Click on that and go ahead and create a folder. Let's say testing API. And OK, so the first thing here is we need to have an API to perform tests on right for that. You can go ahead and search for sample APIs that are available on the net. Before that, we'll create a folder in object repository where you actually store your APIs. So go for new create a folder. Let's say API testing and OK. Under this, you can go ahead and create a web service request. User details. It's a restful API. For now, since we don't have URL, let's just leave it blank and click OK. So as you can see, it's ready here. But the only thing that we need here is an API or sample API to perform tests on. For that, we have a Google. All we have to do is 
I'm gonna search for sample APIs. So like I said guys, there are different APIs, REST API, SOAP API, but for today we'll be checking out how to perform tests on REST API. So I'm basically going for the first link that's here. You can go ahead and use any of these uh, fake online REST APIs or the sample REST APIs available online. So as you can see, I have different kinds of APIs here. I have get, I have post, put, then I have delete, patch, post and all that. So let's go ahead and take one list users and all you have to do is copy this link in and paste it in a new folder and copy the request control C. So as you can see here is our API, but it's in a different format. All you have to do is copy this URL, go back to Catalan Studio and place it here and click on this test request button and it's asking if I want to save the changes and OK. So the request has been sent and we're waiting for the output. Let's see. So here it is. So as you can see, the status of this response is 200 OK. It has taken so and so time and the size is about 1 KB. You have different formats of representing your API request here. For now, it is in JSON format. You can opt for XML or HTML or JavaScript and all that. So let me get back to JSON and you have something called pretty format. As you can see, it's better to understand and easy to figure out. You have something called raw format, which we saw when we just copied the URL, right? This is the raw format. Going back, you have preview and that's how it's supposed to look in the preview and all that. So any of these you can choose according to your comfort. So right now we have created a folder under object repository called API testing and we have a get API or the get command. This is the URL we have pasted it here. So now that our API is ready for testing, the next thing is to go ahead and create test cases. So guys have directly started doing all that stuff here, but you have an option to go and start with the sample project where the sample test cases and the sample API will be provided to you in the Catalan Studio. Go ahead and explore the Catalan Studio application. You'll find it. So now that we are done with our object repository, as in we have our API, let's go ahead and create a few test cases. So the good practice to follow is always a create a folder and create test cases under that so that your test cases are not jumbled or placed here and there. So let's create a folder. Let's give it a user detail verification. Details verification and OK. Now under that new and create a test case. Verification, let's say a details verification. Tags are really important because right now I have only one test case, so it's very easy to search. But when you're doing an actual project of performing an API testing, you'll have multiple thousands of test cases, like I said earlier, when we were discussing the challenges that you come across when you're performing API testing. So you'll have multiple test cases for multiple scenarios. So it's better to add tags so that whenever you want to search a particular test case and if you just type the tag related to it, you'll be easily able to find where the test case is. Details and OK. So here we go. As soon as you create a test case, you'll land on this page where you can add your service word. There's a option where it says add web service keyword. Then you have just add option. This is for the web service keyboard because we are doing a simple project or the sample project on web service testing here or API testing. But you can go ahead and do it for mobile testing, cucumber keywords or custom keyword. If you create one, you can add different kind of decision making statements and all that. That's way too complicated for this video. So let's go ahead with our demo. So anytime you're performing an API test on web services, the first thing you need to do is send a request. You have that here as well. So click on this add web request. The first thing that pops out is send request and the object repository or the API which we're performing test on or for the API request to get all you have to do is copy drag and drop it here or you can just double click on the folder and it will take your page where you have list of API's and you can choose on the one you want and you need to assign a name to the output which you get for the object. So let's just say response. Let's say result one. So yeah, we have added our first command and let me save it. So what I want to check for here, let's go back to the view. I want to check if the status code is 200 or not in while testing. So what I'll do is I'll add the web service command there. But before that you have different status values here. You can just click on this and it'll take you to a page where you'll be shown with what each respond code means. For as for now, we have something called 200 OK. Similarly, you have different things like 100, 101, 201 and all that. What does it say? 
for now it's 200 and then you have 202 which says the request is accepted then you have 206 for the partial content then you have 303 for c other then you have to use proxy 305 like that multiple every request has an state is associated with it right so if you want no more you can just double click on that you'll be taken to that page so where was i getting back to what to test let's test if the status code is 200 or not let's go back to our test case and i'm gonna add a new web service you have a drop down command here you can just click on that and what i want to check i want to check verify response status code click on that so input to test you need to give the input right so you can double click on that and it's the response object which are variable what did we give its result so type that here and obviously the value which you want to test it for let's say 200 and okay and that's done let's add one more command let's say for now i know that this request is supposed to be 200 status but what if i don't know the status i just know the range of it then i want to check if the status of my request lies within the range you have that option as well you can go and add web service again and you have something says verify response status code in range again you can just go ahead and add the input here so again guys if you are new to web service keywords or this api testing and if you have no idea what keywords to use what you want to test for and all that you have an option which says keywords browser and there you have different kind of options to browse or you can say documentation you can actually go for official document station in the catalon studio website but you also can do that here you have built-in commands for web ui keywords you have mobile keywords you have cucumber keywords you have web service keyboard so the thing which is related to the demo which you're doing right now is web service keywords so you have different options for element number request test and your leads let's say for request you have we just use the send request so when you click on that dialog box pops up which says what exactly does that keyword do it sends an http request to web server that's what the send request does and what if an error pops out it throws an exception so what are the parameters that you need to mention for that keyword and all that there's something called send request and verify as well it sends an http request to web server and verifies the response it does the both you will check that out later and then we have something for number basically or equal to greater than less than and all that you can go ahead and check that then you have element features which you want to check we'll do that right now in the demo part you have an option to check verify element property value let's see what that is so if i scroll down it says verify that there's an element with expected property value appear in the return data from a web service call basically you're checking if the particular value which you have given in the input is there or not for that particular element using this element keyword you have text verify element text verify element count then you have uh, verify element response code which we just did and verify response code range that we're using so if you're not familiar with the keywords you can go ahead and use these i mean refer to that or in the documentation getting back to our command we have three options here first one is basically the object variable which you've assigned so it's a variable and what is that it's a result it's a number i want to check if it's between 100 and let's say 150 and 201 and okay so let's get back to our request format and see what else we can do as you can see under this data i have three elements i have one which is related to id4 and one id5 and id6 so basically i have three elements for this data so i want to check if for the id4 the first name is eve or not so what do i do go for the detail verification and click on add web service keyword here verify element property value and as you can see we have three inputs that we are supposed to provide obviously the first one is the variable name which we've given its result next is locator locator is something which is basically telling the application or the catloon studio application here that please go there to that particular location and that's the element value that i want to check on it's like a path so what do you do for that let's just click for okay for that you can find something called json pathfinder you have a chrome plugin as well that you can add to your plugin so you can just use an online json pathfinder i'm just using the first one i found so what you have to do is here enter your json in the editor select the item to view its path and replace x with the number or the name of your variable so that's what i'm gonna do user details this is my json input so i'm gonna copy the entire thing and paste it over here so as you can see the details are shown in the third page i mean the next part of the screen so as you can see under data i have three elements what i want to check is 
if the first name is Eve or not. So click on that. You can see a locator here in the path variable. So copy that. Go back to the Catalan Studio and the string. I'm going to paste it here. And next is obviously again the string that I want to check for. Right now I'm giving the right value, which is Eve, right? So again the string Eve and click on OK. So I guess this is enough for now. Let's go ahead and check the test is running. All you have to do is click on the run button here. So guys, this is what you say the manual format as in you manually entering using different uh, drag and drop options and all that. You have something called script format as well. You can go for that. As you can see, this is a script format. Let me just minimize this. So these are the commands that we just added. First of all, we sent a request for the web server. Then we added a command to check if the response code is 200 or not. Then we had did the same thing to find out the range of it as in if it lies within the range and to check the property value now. So guys, what I'm trying to tell here is that you can either use the manual format of it or the script format of it. If you are most familiar with the script, go ahead and use that. So again, let's go back to manual. And now I want to check if the test is performing well or not. All you have to do is click on this run button. And to view the output, you can just go for this log viewer. As you can see on the screen, the test is being performed. The output for every step or the every keyword that we've added will be shown here. It says the first step is a success as in the request has been sent. Our status code is 200 and data code range is 200, which lies between 150 and 201. But then there's a failure with the last one, which says unable to verify element property value root cause null pointer exception cannot get property data in the null object. Give me a minute guys. I'll figure out the error. So guys, so what do you think the error is? Let me check the user details again. Okay, the first name is Eve, but it's in capital. So as you can see, that is why the test has failed. Now let me edit the string value here and see if it works. Capital Eve and click on OK. Let's save it and try to run the test now. I'm going to go for the log viewer for the full thing. So again, the test connected again. It's wrong, so it's not the problem. So sorry about that guys. The error was that here in the JSON path. I had another variable which is X dot data the copy thing. I mean there was an extra letter in the JSON path which I pasted here. So I did paste the correct part right now. It says the zeroth or the first element of data and the first name that I want to check is Eve or not. So after doing that I did and then if I click on run button. So here we go the log viewer. So as you can see all the four steps are correct. By mistake, I've shown you the the result of giving the ROM input as well. So that way you can make sure your API testing is working well by giving different options for different web service keywords here. Well, we have checked few. Let's go ahead and add one more. So as you can see in the user details, I have three elements under the data elements. As you can see the one with ID one with ID five and one with ID six. So I want to go ahead and add one more command Add keyword. I want to check the elements count here. It checks the number of elements present. Well, again, the variable is result. So I'm going to enter that. And again, I need a JSON path. And let's say I want to check if it's two. It should basically give me an error because there are three elements. So let's go ahead with the negative case and OK. So data. And I'm going to copy this. So as you can see, the error which I did earlier was I copy the X as well. I don't need to do that. I just copy data from data, whatever it is. So when I say first name, I just have to copy from this data to the first name. Right now, I just want the part of this. So that's just data. We can just type it here. So data and enter. Well, it should show us an error, but how about we give positive keys? Anyway, we're testing, so I'm gonna save it. So what do we do before that? I'm gonna show you another thing. Let's make it negative case. Let's say if and OK. Now, after saving, if I run the test, so it's basically checking for the every step. The request is being sent. The next step is to check for the response code. That's done. Response code range, that's also done. But since the fourth keyword, which is to check the element property value, since we have a negative case, the program stopped executing there. I didn't, it didn't go beyond that. But after that, we do have another keyword for which it has to check to. So for that, we have different properties to go ahead and change how this keyword has to behave. You can right click on that. You have something called change failure handling here. So you have different option which says you have to stop on failure or continue on failure. Let's say we have given continue on failure. So it will stop. I mean, it will execute the step even if it's there and you know, it shows an error and go to the next part of it. Let me save it. And if you click on run again, 
let's go for the log viewer here we go guys it didn't stop there it went for the next step as well and since that was also a negative case it's shown that there's an error it says it's not equal with the actual property value eve and there's one more error right when you click on that particular step it says expected element count 2 which is not equal to the actual count 3 so that's the error. That's how you perform tests on API. Apart from this, if I click on the objective or the API request here, which is get request basically, you have different options here as well to check out. You have something called authorization. If you are actually providing some email ID and all that, you have a resin, you're testing for the login page and all, you have authorization. Right now, we do not have any authorization. You have multiple authorization options as well basic, auth, one, not zero, two, not zero, and all that. Then you have something called HTTP header. Right now, we do not have an HTTP header. If you do, you can add it here. Same goes for the HTTP body. But the important thing here is something called verification. So, as you can see, there are already some snippets here or the test skips which are already written for this for which response is received. You have get a variable response body contains string. Then you have convert to JSON is equal to a string or not status code. So, if I click on that, you can see a command being added. Let me hide this and let me expand this for you. As you can see, when I clicked on that, this was added. Assert that the entire thing to verify if the status code is 200 or not, and to assert that it's equal to 200. Similarly, let's check out on the snippets. I clicked on JSON value check. Let's see what does that have to add. So it says the verify element property value is so and so, but right now the actual data is not put here. It says the random data. Let's say I want to check if the ID is six. All you have to do is place the cursor on the option that you want to check on and press Control K. You can see a command or the verification command being added to it. You can see a fly command property value. So it says verify element property value data two, as in the for second element, if the ID is six or not. So that's another way of adding verification snippets. Once you've added, all you have to do is click on this test request and do you want to save changes? Okay. So the request has been sent again. Now you can go for something called verification log here. So guys, as you can see, when I place the cursor on ID6 and press control K, the command has been added to my script, which is verify element property value if the ID is six or not for the second element. Now that I've added it, I want to check if the verification is passing. What you have to do is test click, not just click on the run button, click on that and say test request and verify. If you do that, again, a request will be sent. And you have something called verification log here. As you can see, when you see that, it says the result has been passed. So that's another way of doing it. Now let's go back to details verification. And after send request, let me add one more command. I want to send request and verify for the same thing result one and click then let me make all this right I want to give the right data Eve and I'm going to make it three so now if I run everything should be green because we have given the right data right so I've clicked on the log viewer it's maximize the screen so as you can see, the first is though supposed to send the request. It's walk and verify the status code is 200. Yes, the result one send request and verify. So it'll verify the verifications which we just added. That also work. Then you have a status code range 200 lies between 150 and 200 mod one. So it worked. Then the property value for Eve and the result data is three. So as you can see, everything is passed properly. So guys, that's as easy it is to perform testing using Catalon Studio. Well, what I've done is really basic because since we're learning the basics here, so we have just performed testing only for the get request. So like I showed you guys earlier, we have different kind of requests here. We have post request, patch request, but when you go for the post, you have two things. You have response and request here. So you have an HTTP body as well that you will have to add. Well, obviously this is your JSON format API request, but this is the body where you have to add. I did show you here in the user details. You have something called HTTP body. So when you are trying to test for post or put and all that, you'll have two things. You'll have to paste this thing in the body part and then proceed with your testing. Then same goes for the get. For the get, we do not have any body, so that's it. So guys, that's all about it. And one more thing, this is for the REST API. You also have something called SOAP API. For that as well, you have an option to go ahead and perform tests. 
so guys that's about it we did see how to use catalon studio to perform api test like i said it's a very basic testing which we did earlier you can go ahead and use the catalon studio for performing soap tests and add your test cases to test studio so that you can view your reports and all that so i hope you've understood what we learned today well if you have any doubts regarding the demo please do post them in the comment section and guys thank you and if you have liked the video please do like it and like i said if you have any comments or any errors or any queries that you want to convey to us please to post them in the comment section and i'll meet you in the next session thank you guys i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to edureka channel to learn more happy learning